This video spanned over a month of recording. We are making hard apricot cider. It's also a continuation from our apricot cider juice video. Hello. After we juiced the apples and apricots, we did not have as much juice as we expected or hoped to have. So to counter for this, we are adding about one pound of sugar to our juice mixture. This is just regular cane sugar. And then we're topping it off with water. Now we mix it up really good to incorporate the sugar and the juice and the water. Then we boil it to reduce the amount of bad bacteria that might be developing within our juice mixture. We are not professionals, but it is highly important when brewing to sanitize. We also have to pick a yeast. Premier rouge, premier blanc, premier cuvée, premier côté blanc, premier classique. So I chose the green packet because we just haven't tried this one before. After boiling our juice mixture, we then have to return it to our brewing vessel and let it cool to a temperature to where it doesn't crack the glass and it won't kill the yeast. And then we sanitize everything, including the yeast packet, the scissors, as much as we can to reduce the chance of getting ourselves sick. And the yeast on top of the juice. And then we need to incorporate the yeast in with the juice mixture and let it sit for at least two weeks. As you can see, the yeast is already activated, causing bubbles going up into the airlock chamber, which releases gas, but doesn't allow in contaminants to enter the vessel. And it, here's a burp. Many hours later. This is after two weeks about Sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Sanitize everything that will be touched or used. This will reduce uh, chances of bad bacteria in home brewing. It's very important so we don't get sick, don't get friends sick. This is one of our simple setups, just having the juice at a higher elevation than the transferred vessel. We need to transfer it to remove the particulate that has settled out of the bottom of the first vessel and it'll help to make a more clear, better mouthfeel um, cider. You can see all of that extra particulate at the bottom we don't really want in our finished drink. And again, sanitize. We put sanitized water in the airlock. That way contaminants really have a hard time getting in. In this final portion, we lost juice as well. Let that sit for a few weeks and then it's ready to drink. Many unbearable hours later. We have the finished product, our apple apricot cider. Uh, normally it would be bottled and then add a little extra sugar and let that carbonate and then you actually have the carbonated beverage. But uh, we're lazy and just want to drink it. So we're going to go ahead and pour some into a couple glasses, uh, give it a taste, and then uh, sit it in the fridge to actually clarify a little further. So far, we have it clarified quite a bit. You'll see a little line at the bottom there. That's some of the sediment that's come out after transferring it. Okay, and we'll go ahead and pour some. My glass is off camera, by the way. I just, I'm not just pouring it on the table. Same for you. Kind of thick. Ooh. Yeah, it smells like cider we've made in the past. It smells very apple -y. Yeah, very, very apple -y. It was mostly apple. Yeah. yeah. But it does have a little bit of a non-apple fruit smell to it, which is the apricot. More complex flavor. Yeah. Are we tasting? Yeah. Going without me? Mm. It's not as tart as the juice was. It's kind of sour. Mm. It's like a pleasant tartness. I think it's really good. Yeah, that's very good. It is a little syrupy. Like, I can taste it. Yeah, but that's not a bad thing. Yeah, like thick as far as like a drink you might go. I really like it. Um, I think... It definitely has, uh, it's not specifically apricot taste, 
but it's non-apple fruit. Yeah. It's got um, like a crisp flavor to it though. Yeah. Like the apple provides kind of a crispness to it. And then you get a little bit more fruitiness from the apricot. And the syrupiness is probably from, do apples have a lot of pectin? Probably not, right? I don't know. It was pretty syrupy when we... When we made it, yeah. yeah. But like, do you think the pectin, in like the natural pectin in the fruit had anything to do with this? I think because we made, we made a peach one mm -hmm. and that was very syrupy. Yeah. So maybe the apricot added syrupy likeness mm -hmm. to this one. You can kind yeah. of see bubbles forming on the bottom of the wine glass. Yeah, there's always going to be some dissolved carbon dioxide in it, especially when we cool it down, since that's how gas works. <laughs> it does have gas works. When you cool it down, there's going to be more dissolved carbon dioxide in it. So if we were to actually put it in the fridge, cool it, put a cap on it, it would lightly pressurize and be kind of like a sparkling berry wine that you can get in the store. Nice. You've got to be careful with these though. Uh, because if you you don't actually want to let them pressurize, um, they will explode. They're not designed for pressure. It's less dangerous and more just a mess. And it'll just crack and then spill everywhere. A uh, valid and good method of storing fruit juice um, without refrigeration. <laughs> All the bad bacteria uh, has a much harder time living in the alcohol. Anything else? It's good. I like looking through this.